story cup number three. We are here back again with another co-caster. It is Izuba Alish. I wanted to say, but you're not, not playing for Izuba. <laughs> <laughs> used to, used to. Yes, but it's Alish anyway. And I was looking forward to that all day long because Alish is a pretty chill guy. And we are going to have a nice match here between Orange and Oskaka. So both players are coming from Sweden and we can expect that they both know each other. I talked to them and they do know each other. Yeah, they definitely do know each other and like both of those players are in the scene for a long time. Uh, I don't know if uh, people know Oskaka that well, even though they probably should, because Oskaka is a former teammate of Xixo. Uh, Xixo, when uh, they were like in Root Gaming House, Oskaka was there with him. Uh, Oskaka has a lot of experience playing Hearthstone. He always plays those qualifiers. And he's like probably unluckiest guy of all of us because <laughs> he, when he plays those qualifiers, he always gets really, really far. Then one game before actually qualifying, he loses. Well, this time it happened to me lose to him in the qualifier final. So uh, this time I'm the unlucky guy and Oskaka had his luck finally. But uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely on your side there. I, I met Oskaka in online tournaments uh, many times. So he's, he's definitely a well-known player and a good player at least in the pro scene not too famous as you said because he did not quite appear at, on, on too many offline events but this is one of his first offline events and definitely a player that can keep up with orange oh definitely i think they always like if you look at each other like uh, it at each is uh deck lists right they both brought the same uh the same lists i mean not the same list but same classes uh they both bands uh, band hunter so they're afraid of hunter which makes sense with their lineup and yeah i think they actually practiced a lot together because um as he said, they are both Swedish. I know Orange practiced a lot with Freaker, which is here as uh, Darkstar, his former teammate. Yeah, his former teammate. Yeah. That's. Uh, and I think Osaka was kind of practicing with them as well. So they kind of probably know each other's decks. And I think we're going to have like, a really good match here because, yeah. Me but too. So uh, are we calling a favorite here in Orange, who is now a DreamHack winner, who is a bit I more... I am, I am, not Dra oh, DreamHack, I, I am. am. <laughs> yeah, Katowice, right. Mm -hmm. It was It was not a DreamHack, it was I am Katowice. But anyway, he has won one of those major tournaments and he established a name for himself in the scene. Definitely. I mean, uh, he's also in Team Archon, uh, which is probably one of the biggest Hearthstone teams, like one of the best it Hearthstone teams. It is the best definitely. team right now. At least that's what people think about it. But you're playing for another team, so you no, have no, to no, say I, something I, else. I, <laughs> I would say I would say Nihilum is probably yeah. there. Uh, Nihilum and uh, or Archon are the two best teams right now. And I think uh, so Orange playing for one of those teams means that he's probably pretty good. And we can actually go into games right now. And it seems it's gonna be Mage against Druid. Uh, I don't think both players played yet, and it seems like this is gonna be probably Freeze Mage for Oskaka. Yeah, he likes to play his Freeze Mage. He also got me with that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I mean, this matchup is kinda really not too great for Freeze. Uh, it's winnable, but usually, like, when Druid has a really good start, like uh, playing Wild Growth into Shredder, and then just like snowball out of control, and then the combo comes out. When the combo comes in time, that's uh, what it all comes down to. When you have the combo coming down on turn 9 already and you can then deal lethal damage with that, well, in that case it is mostly just a progging that first secret, progging that first ice block. Then you're putting the freeze mage behind and that's how you win that match as a druid. On the other hand, well, another card making that very interesting here is Emperor Thorsan because that makes the, the combo sometimes come a bit earlier. Yeah, definitely. The Emperor is one of the, one of the best cards, I would say probably the best card out of the first wing. And in Druid is especially because like Druid has so many cards that like he can combo out like as you said like combo on turn seven this is pretty scary thing right and it's actually really real like we've seen combos on turn five in this tournament I think already so that's something you have to watch out for and Oskaka here starts with the loot hoarder I mean he needs to get some cards like he also wants to play some get some presents on board right as I said like if uh, if Druid gets a really strong presence on the board early, early on. It can mean a lot of troubles for the Freeze Mage player. That's for certain. And Oskaka also goes here for the Blood Mage Thanos. That just means another card draw against the, the Druid. And wow! Now, with that Innervate on turn 4, you could go for that early Emperor Thoris. And even though you would not have a nice turn 5 lineup, but Druid has many 5 drops in the deck. Well, at least those combo Druids do play many 5 drops. So you can always draw into one of those. Yeah, it's something to think about uh, for sure, uh, but I'm not really sure if he wants to do it right now. It, I mean, uh, it can get really kind of countered by just frost bolting it. 
by frost um, bolting it, but you're keeping it out of fireball range. True, true, true. And it seems like he wants to go for it. I kind of like it because your hand is pretty good for the follow. Like, next turn, you're going to have just Shredder into hero power, which is pretty good at this board right now, as you see. Uh, and if Oskaka doesn't have the frost bolt, that can be really, really troublesome for. Or and we know him. he doesn't have it, and this turn looks like an Arcane Intellect turn to me. Yeah, this can be Arcane Intellect. He can also go for Acolyte of Pain. Uh, Acolyte of Pain is going to save him some health. Um, if he plays Arcane Intellect, that means that probably Xixo, uh, I mean, Orange receives Xixo because he plays on his account. But, but you could uh, also run into a swipe with that. Mm -hmm, definitely. So both of those plays are quite good. Uh, I'm not sure which one is better right now. I, to be honest, have n not much experience with Freeze in this meta. I used to play Freeze a lot late, oh, like three, four months ago, but... Another thing is, and that's an, a thing that Orange might have to think about if he could maybe clear both of those minions and uh, let the Acolyte of Pain draw two cards, he could maybe overdraw uh, Ostkaka here, but uh, as a, without the swipe, that's just impossible here. Yeah, I really like this Acolyte of Pain because it pretty much just says like, yeah, uh, you I, either you save me five health or I'll just draw more cards, right? So both of those things are kind of good for Oskaka. Like, like healing himself for five, pretty much, is pretty strong right now. And uh, we see the Shredder hero power that we kind of expected. And is Orange gonna go face or is he gonna kill the Ecolite? That's the question here. I kind of like to go to face here, to be honest. Play oh, trades. Okay. Yeah, he trades the Ecolite of Pain away, draws into another mad scientist. And Emperor Thorosan is the second turn on the board and reducing the cost of the cards even more. So next turn we might see an Azur Drake with a Pilot Dreader or a Keeper of the Grove being played on turn six, and that's sick. That's pretty sick. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can just go Azur Drake Shredder <laughs> and just be happy about yourself right there. Um, so question here for Skaka is like, what do I do with this Emperor? Like, do I just leave it there like already? Because I mean. The question is, does he value his Icelands more? Well, I would go for the Fireball. I like Fireball too, because like with Icelands, you can do more damage in one turn if you get a Frost And also, with it. using the Frost Nova here, that's the main reason for me why I would not go for that play. You really want to keep that for later on when the Druid is putting on more pressure. Definitely. The problem here is that like usually when you want to use the Frost Nova is when you, when you have a Doomsayer in hand already. And we see that even if he draws Doomsayer for a Skaka, our, uh, our orange just right now has like two mana Keeper of the Grove for silence. That's pretty damn sick. And now he will probably go for the Azure Drake and the Pile of the Shredder to establish a bigger board. He draws into a Shade of next Ramas. He has the Savage Roll lining up in his hand. And yeah, soon to come maybe a Force of Nature and then you have the combo already lining up and there's a lot of damage coming in. Definitely. I think what like Orange is thinking here for a little bit here is if he goes hero power, but Shredder is just so much stronger here. And it's also other thing, like even if the Doomsayer goes through, which we know that he's go not going to go through, uh, then you have a uh, two minions that comes out from the Shredder, yeah, right? Yeah, two, two drops coming out of the Shredder, but this turn looks pretty decent to me for a Frostnover Doomsayer play. If you are lucky, you get a second Doomsayer out of those pile of <laughs> Shredders. <laughs> well, you are the guy to talk to about that. Oh, yeah. You had two consecutive Doomsayers <laughs> out of out of your Shredders. Oh my god. That was pretty sad. But yeah, we see the Frostnova Doomsayer here. It makes sense. But unfortunately for Oskaka, Orange is going to have a Keeper to silence that Doomsayer. The question now is, I would not even play the Shade of Next Ramos because your board is already so huge and you would lose all your momentum by losing all your minions because turn 6 probably is a Blizzard turn or turn 7 following that up, Flame Strike. So you have already to think about all those AoE spells. Yeah. And that's the reason why I would just go for the Keeper of the Grove. That's enough. Maybe take out the uh, Blood Mage Thalnos if you want to prevent some, some spell, spell damage. damage. You should so because otherwise that Blizzard would also take out your, your Piloted yeah. Shredders. Yeah, so we'll see the shape shift here for sure. The question is here, uh, does he go for the shade? I mean, he can if he's not afraid of Blizzard. It's really, really uh, dangerous water then for Skaka. And if wow. he doesn't draw it here, I mean, this could be a good game, just straight up. A cone of cold. That uh, saves him a bit. Yeah, cone of cold saves him a little bit. Uh, I mean, he can just go like Mad Scientist, cone of cold, probably that's what we're going to see. But is it going to be enough? I mean... 
we have a flame strike for next turn, which is pretty nice. Like the flame strike next turn is gonna be really nice. Um, yeah, that's gonna be crucial. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, it's gonna be enough because like uh, when you flame strike that, he gets minions from Shredder, right? And we see already the shape shift in hand already as well. So I think it's gonna be something like uh, probably keeping Rudolph Claw for himself right now, and then maybe like turn after just go. Shapeshift, uh, charge, and savage roar. He can play the. He can play it here as well, but I just don't really like it. It's like that's the one thing that like uh, Druid can lose this matchup is if he wastes a lot of his resources uh, like early on. That's and, it. Yeah, exactly, and that could happen actually if he just goes for Druid Claw here. Yeah, he should not overextend mm -hmm. here. He just should stick to what is on the board, Druid of the Claw. Yeah, I definitely like this attack. Uh, the attack with the shade, uh, with the shade here, is pretty good. I think. Uh, you have to. Yeah, exactly. And killing the mad scientist here is pretty crucial as well. Now yeah, he can go for Druid of the Claw. Druid of the Claw with taunt. Now he can go for Druid of the Claw with taunt if he wants to. So and there he goes. In there he goes. Yeah. Yeah. Leaves another minion on the board for him, and uh, this looks to me like a pretty clear flame strike turn. If he does not draw into into a blizzard, but first of all, we do see the ice barrier being triggered here. And actually, I would have, if I was Oskaka, I wanted to see the ice block here. Okay, yeah, I think like we just saw the blizzard drawing, but I still think it's a flame strike turn to be honest. Like, uh, if you blizzard here, you still get two minions that come out from the shredders, right? But you and get that as well with the flame strike, and with sure, the flame sure. strike, you leave the four damage of the druid of the claw also available for next turn, and like that, you freeze that and can clear the whole board next turn with the flame strike. And if he plays something else, something like a, a fresh Azur Drake or a Harrison Jones, maybe, you can still clear that with the flame yeah. strike. I mean, the thing is, if he flame strikes here, he's kind of really, really open to combo Savage Roar with the Force of Nature as well. But I mean, like, you don't really, like, oh. you can't really play around it at this, mo at this moment. Well, that Low Walker Cho is adding some spice here to the game, but that Patient Assassin is not really doing a lot. Druid of the Claw still on the board. How much damage do we have with a uh, Druid of the Claw in cat mode and with a Savage that's Roar? That's 10, uh, 15. That's 15. That's not too much. Isn't it 19? Oh, 9, 9, 9, 9 19. Yeah, I missed the 4, four, four but damage. But you would yeah. give your, uh, give your yeah, opponent the Savage Roar, but well, the Savage I mean, Roar and the Freeze Mage. <laughs> yeah, what, what is Freeze Mage going to do with Savage Roar? Um, I think Big Game Hunter is better here. I think yeah. Big Game Hunter is better here. Like, you can keep the BGH for Alexstrasza, but... Um, there's not really point. I think like he's at this moment, he's kind of all in, uh, so he goes with it. We were p talking about it that the only way for the druid, that's what you said, is if you overextend. And uh, Orange did put a lot on the board always, and it looks like now this blizzard is be pretty, pretty strong. crucial. And uh, what is left here for Orange? It's just a savage roar. He has to draw uh, to draw into an ancient of lore to even refill his hand, and he's running out of steam. Definitely. Um, so I mean, ancient of lore would be pretty good here, but savage roar is just a blank. This is going to be just one damage to face, and I mean there are no druid of the claws anymore in the deck, so no charge minions there. Uh, he can always draw into force and innovate and use double combo. It's still possible, but. What do we got here? Ice block is pretty good draw. Like you kind of want to set up just right now, like maybe like draw first, draw two cards, see what you get, and then maybe like barrier ice block. Well, just first of all, steps. I would clear the low walk. Yeah, you show. can you can clear that too. Um, then yeah, go for the arcane intellect or the acolyte of pain if you want to preserve some damage. The same thing as last time, and then you don't even have to play the ice block. You can also play the ice barrier because mm -hmm. even if uh, if orange comes up here with the combo. On 21 health, you are out of range. Yeah. I mean, Eclide of Pain doesn't really make sense here, because like even if he plays it, he's not going to save any health. The druid, a druid will go face anyway at this point, I think, uh, because there's no really point. I like the barrier more. Like You want to set up your traps or your secrets. I just call it traps because of the hunter. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Ragnaros is a really good deal. Yeah, uh, actually, that's that's decent here. Yeah, I think this is one of the best draws that you could get. Uh, Ragnaros is one of the strongest cards against uh, Freeze Mage because Freeze Mage usually doesn't really have a good response to it. Uh, they don't run big GH usually. 
uh, they that means that usually they have to just spend like fireball frost bolt into it. So in the end, the Doomsayer is getting some value. If Ragnaros hits it, it preserves eight damage being dealt to the face. So it plays some kind of anti healbot here. Yeah, some anti healbot. But we'll let's see. see what Ragnaros hits. Ragnaros decides the Fire Lord. Okay, so do we see? What do we see? He so, hits the face, so he, he does his job. And yeah, I mean, for Oskaka, this is kind of weird spot. Like at this moment, he would probably just want to like drop the Alex Raza, which is not fine if he doesn't. Like he can still just go Arcane Intellect, Ice Block. Uh, hopefully, uh, he's gonna survive. Like he's gonna survive not proccing the Ice Block uh, for one more turn, which is gonna be pretty crucial, I think. And we see. He's gonna draw, yeah, he's gonna draw first. We'll yeah, see. he goes for the Echo Life Pain here. Uh, Doomsayer Doom is really interesting. I like the Doomsayer. I think it's just like, maybe dropping the Doomsayer with the Ice Block isn't even too bad. If you slam that on the board right here, you make it very awkward for the, for the Druid to deal with that. Maybe he's even gonna use the, the Blizzard because there's no other value for that. Then in combination with the Hero ability, you can take care of that Doomsayer. But uh, still, you will leave that body on the board for Ragnaros to hit it. It's an option. It's an option. Uh, he can also go just like Loot Hoarder. I think Ice Block is coming up here, as for sure. Like, yeah, uh, Ice Block is coming up here. And yeah, I like the Doomsayer. Doomsayer sounds really sweet. Very nicely played here by Ostkaka. Uh, does Red do something? I think uh, you definitely Red for one. You wouldn't need the card draw. You just need the Force of Nature. I would, that kind I would of stuff. agree to that, yeah. Maybe just like red for one, blizzard, hero power. Of course, you can draw something better. So what do we get from there? Uh, Belcher not isn't Belcher. too bad, but it's not going to do much right now. He thinks about the Savage Roar. Yeah, I like the Savage Roar because if you play Savage Roar, you can also play the Belcher. You can deal with the uh, Doomsayer so nothing dies. And for next turn, you still have another Savage Roar, right? So that should be pretty good. And if Rag hits 8 again, it would be like for face, that would be pretty sick. I totally agree to that now. Slash Belcher comes on the board as you predicted it, and Ragnaros now hits the Doomsayer that was silenced before. So, some kind of value out of that as we discussed it earlier. And now, here for for Askaka, which turn would you would you play here out as a freeze mage? I would just play Alexstrasza, but you didn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> you would play Alexstrasza, right? I would right? play Alexstrasza. You, you would put it out of your sleeve. Mm -hmm. Okay, Alexstrasza, like you play poker, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I know, I mean, uh, it's kind of unfortunate for Oskaka that he doesn't have Alexstrasza. <laughs> like, he has only three, fi five cards left in his deck, and he still doesn't yeah. have that needed Alexstrasza, uh, which is obviously kind of um, bad for him. But, I mean, he's still on 16. If he freezes the board here, uh, there's a really big chance he's gonna survive another turn because he knows six, uh, I, was, I still say Xixo because he's the Xixo Yeah, there's the Xixo attack. We need to put something in front of that maybe. Oh uh, yeah, because um, Orange. Orange Orange still um, has everything free so he can't go just for the Savage War. That's the thing and we see Archmage and Tinnitus here with two spells that might trigger it. So, let's see. We also haven't seen an, an Frost, uh, Frostbolt, Frostbolt in the in the whole game so far. Emperor Thorson also very nice here. Yeah, actually it might look like that, that he actually doesn't play Alexstrasza, it's possible. You can also ask me. I'm not really sure. I think like it's probably impossible for him to add. There it is. There so, it is. Yeah. So for Oskaka, he has now double Frostbolt and one Fireball in deck. That's true, right? That should be it. So right now, if Oskaka goes Alexstrasza enemy face into... Uh, ice block, rose ball. I think he should have enough, right? That's 18 forks uh, for orange. It really depends if he draws the frost ball or he doesn't. Because if he draws the frost ball, he's good to go. But if he doesn't, he's gonna be in trouble. Yeah, your chances are 66 to 33 percent. Yeah. So yeah, I like the Alexstrasza here. You just need to set up for yourself for the win. Like if you don't set up yourself for the win. It's kind of like, you just have to do this. 
We also see Dr. Boom here. Uh, I would slam that because you always have the chance that if your opponent plays some AoE spell or just uh, attacks into something that the bomb hits the mage in the turn when the secret is not active because mm -hmm. secrets are just active in the opponent's turn. So I would go for that. There's no reason not to do anything else. I would also go for the hero ability to get the maximum heal that's possible here and then just proc the secret and hope that Ragnaros takes care of Alexstrasza. Yeah, I think this seems pretty smart. Um, there's also like few outs for uh, Orange, right? Like he still has low depth, if I'm correct. He still has uh, additional floors for heals. So it's going to be still pretty interesting for uh, who, what players will draw. But unless Orange draws one of those draws, he's actually going to have a pretty tough time uh, winning this game, I think. Okay, he wants maybe to take out that Alexstrasza here mm -hmm. and then proc the secret with Ragnaros. Yeah, he takes care of that. Uh, hero powers just for the maximum heal, as you said. And Ragnaros is gonna proc the ice block, but is this gonna be frost pop? It's 66% chance to draw it. That could be pretty, pretty huge right now. But even though you have to play Antonidas. No, no, no you don't have to play Antonidas. Is it you lethal? No, no, no. no it's yeah, yeah. He's just gonna ice block, uh, yeah, frost bolt, ice lens, ice lens. You have extra yeah, pyroblast. pyroblast. Yeah, sure. Exactly. You do not have to play Antonidas here. But he draws the Frostbolt, so he, he is lucky. Or, well, if you say that's lucky, it's 66 to 33% uh, and there we go. Does the exact play that you suggested and now it comes down. Does Low he draw? Low tap and lores. Low tap and lores. Does he Three draw draws. one of those? Three draws. Uh, Orange is at the moment 12 cards in deck, so it's one to like 25% chance to draw it. And there's a Sylvanas and that's not gonna be, that's not gonna be good enough. Like, this is the game. That's not helping him, and we see the Pyroblast, one of my favorite personal cards. <laughs> I mean, the animation is pretty, pretty good looking. Oh, it's sick. I always like the moment when the game freezes, when you're playing the Pyroblast and you have that, that ball of fire. So yeah, uh, this is going to be 1-0 for, uh, for Oskaka, which is really, really good, because this matchup is pretty hard to win. So I'm pretty sure he's going to be really happy about this uh, outcome. And uh, for what do we have for Orange afterwards? Orange can play, st still play every deck that he wants to, uh, but Skaka needs to go for Rogue or Druid. What do we go for right now? Rogue or Druid is left. Uh, what does Orange have in this lineup? I can't read what you write there. <laughs> oh, uh, Orange has Mage, Rogue, Druid. And Mage, Rogue, Osaka Druid. has Rogue, Ro Rogue and Druid right now. Rogue and Druid right now. Mage, Rogue, Druid. Well, it doesn't really matter yeah. here. I guess the matchups are pretty equal. Mm -hmm. Whatever you take, um, I would, I personally would maybe take the rogue now because I feel like if you're on a hot streak, with you should just go on and play the rogue because the rogue is maybe a bit more, more uh, luck important than than the druid. And the druid, we said it so many times today. The druid is always a very nice deck to have it in in your backup. You know, if you play the Druid as your last deck and you have three chances to win against your you opponent... You will just draw Wild Growth one of those games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> like you would just have... <laughs> like, I mean, uh, Druid is all about those Wild Growths and Nervates, and if you're playing three games in a row with Druid, once you'll get lucky. Yeah, uh, that's uh, totally the reason, so... Well, but in the end, it doesn't matter. He could also go for Druid now, because I don't really see a bad matchup here. With the Mage, maybe... Maybe you want to play the rogue against the mage. If it's not a freeze mage, you want to rather play the rogue there. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like the, the druid is heavily struggling with the mag mages. And the rogue has got a better matchup there. Maybe, maybe. I think orange is going to probably play mag mage. Uh, if I remember correctly from past tournaments. I don't remember what he played in Vaya game. But before Vaya game, he was always playing uh, mag mage. The thing where, where it matters what Oskaka plays is what does he expect orange to play. Exactly. That's where it comes to a point, and that's something that we don't really know, but the players know each other. We have pointed it out before. So now those mind games or uh, the intel that you have might come to a point where it's maybe crucial. Maybe it's crucial, yeah. I mean, the thing is, like, if you play Druid, it's going to have a good matchup against Rogue, and it's going to have 50-50 against Druid. 
Uh, if you play Rogue, it's 50-50 uh, against Rogue and kind of un uh, unfavorite. Not much, but kind of unfavorite against Druid. And if you play Mage, uh, it's kind of unfavorite against Rogue, I feel like, uh, but it's favorite against Druid. So, like, you can't really make up your mind that much, but I think going for Rogue or Druid is probably better here because, like, you have more favorite matchups with those two classes. Exactly what I think, too. And we are jumping into the second game of the series. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to see the second game of Ostkaka versus Orange. Ostkaka currently leading 1-0 with a very nice match here. Freeze Mage against Druid. And now we go. He picks the Rogue. Yeah. We are good players. Yeah, we're good players, <laughs> but Orange picks a Mage, uh, which is uh, really surprising to me, to be honest. We'll see what kind of Mage it is. Oh, it seems it's like a it's, a, mage. Yeah, it's a Tempo Mage. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. Um, there's not really too great of one. I mean, but I really understand why why Orange picks the, the mage here because you feel comfortable with the mage against the druid. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like what well, and any kind of mage right now apart from the freeze and mage. And you have to play the mage anyways at one point going up against druid or rogue and th at that point I think I I really understand and I like the choice here to go for for the mage anyway he runs into Oscar's uh, rogue and we give we both do give the edge here to to do rogue. I mean, this matchup is not as bad as against Mask Mage. I think, like, because you play counter spells here, uh, you play. Um, sometimes they play duplicates. I'm not really sure what kind of uh, list Orange runs. Um, Portal, Portal can just sometimes just swing the game like Portal you just is Portal. Nice. Here, that flame drop. cannon to deal with Azra Drakes or just flame cannon and ping to deal with Violet Teachers. But it looks like he skipped the Violet Teachers for the Pile of the Treaders. Some mm -hmm. people do that. And so, what gets... Oh, that's kind of unfortunate. I mean, oh the wow. easiest way you can win those games is that, like, you just play Portal and you get a 6-drop. You mm. play turn 3 and you just win the game. Like, you get 7 high min or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's it. So, he's not really too happy about it, but he's not really too bump. Like, uh, this is 0 mana, 2 damage removal. So, it's still pretty good. You can also kind of combo it out with uh, Oil, which is pretty good as well. Like, you just play this Oil. It's, like, cheaper South Sea Deccan. Uh, well, but it's for the mage, so the mage doesn't oh, have yeah, the oil. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I got mixed up. Yeah, oh. you're right. <laughs> and the thing is, if you want to to use it as a removal, uh, what targets are there? The rogue has the SI seven agents. Then you have to use the ping. You whatever so comes out from shredder, maybe whatever comes out from shredder. What comes out of the shredder? Yeah, that's that's definitely a target. So. Orange also decides to keep that to not waste it here on the damage. I also don't see the point why you should run into that weapon. Mm -hmm. And now Orange goes for the secret on turn three for the mirror entity here, uh, preparing maybe for well for the Violet Teacher for the Shredder. I like it. I mean, like whatever he can else do is kind of shitty. He would have to probably just ping the Talnos, which is not really too great. You give yeah. more options to Rogue. So I kind of like this uh, mirror entity because it prepares you for. Like you, it pretty much stops uh, Rogue to get out of control. Anyway, Oskaka could also have a three drop. And yeah. then it would be pretty devastating to have the secret played now, but he goes for the coin. He does not really care about that secret. I wouldn't do. Like, you have a backstab for three damage. Like, uh, it's not that big of a deal. And he trades that shredder instantly away with his backstab. And what comes out is very nice. It's, it's not the bad pint at all. Size summoner. Yeah, it's not bad at and all. And that means a turn for Azur Drake if you want to. But the thing is, with the pilot a Shredder on the board, it makes it a bit awkward. You don't want your Azur Drake to be traded away so easily. But by having two Azur Drakes here and no real good turn four play, I would suggest still go for that. It's, yeah. it's a card draw. It deals with the Shredder in one way. And there's... No real other play, but yeah, I think like, I think Frostball is actually fine. Like you want to just remove the board. If you remove the board right now, and the rogue is not gonna have any more minions, um, you just get rid of the tempo. You just get rid of the tempo, and and the blue guild warrior gets his duty done. That's good. It gets his duty down exactly. It's a two like zero mana removal. I mean two mana because you played portal for it. Wow, that that's preparation is a top deck with that sprint. That's exactly what he wanted to do this turn. Yeah, that's that's. A huge top deck. It doesn't ma might seem like that, but like you, you have nothing to play right now, and that preparation gets us, gets him to draw some cards with it's strength. Just perfect to refill that. Maybe he draws an Azure Drake that he can slam on turn five, or maybe something to contest the Azure Drake that is probably going to come down on that uncontested board here by Ostkaka. 
So uh, we are just about to see. He draws a blade flurry. He draws a deadly, deadly poison. poison is big too. It's very nice. And another preparation here. Yeah, there's no need to use the prep right now. Um, and if that pine size summoner stays, we might see a turn six Doctor Boom. That would be pretty sick. Um, I wouldn't go ahead of that right now. I mean, probably next turn is gonna yeah, be something he will, like he will take it. Yeah, out, I think he will take care of it. Uh, there's probably just gonna be something like hero power, deadly poison with eviscerate. Exactly. He, he can he can still go for like uh, farseer eviscerate if he wants to. Really, um, it's a possibility. But well, then he leaves the threat of the pine size summoner on the board. So I would also agree if you're doing it safe, you go for the dagger mastery. You play your deadly poison and then go eviscerate. Take con can take care of everything and. Then you're in a pretty decent position because dealing with that Dr. Boom seems to be pretty awkward here. He has the zaps, but as the rogue, that's something I experienced lately, is even if you zap that Dr. Boom, you struggle dealing with that boom bots and they're dealing so much damage over time and against a mage who has a fireball lining up in his hand and some potential more burst who can just slam that uh, Dr. Boom again to get another boom bots, uh, that's just not feeling good for the rogue. Definitely. So, I mean, Oscar has a lot of options here. Um, the thing is, if they don't kill the Pinsai somewhere, like, you pretty much just play around not boom. Like, the boom you're only afraid of if you yeah. don't kill the Pinsai summoner. So, right now, Oscar is saying you're not going to have a boom in hand, and unfortunately for him, Orange has it. Yeah, you would so. also be playing around every 5-drop in combination with a 2-mana spell. Mm. Uh, so it was reasonable to, to do the Dagger Mastery with the Deadly Poison. You were also suggesting it, but he goes for the heal up. He wants to establish some kind of board for himself, and we will now see how Orange punishes that. Yeah, the Dr. Boom is huge here. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate. But I mean, as a rogue, you kind of don't need board presence, but you also kind of really need it. So it makes sense. And... This actually doesn't really look that bad. Uh, he can actually clear the board almost. Yeah, he misses one damage. Which is yeah, you miss one damage with the deadly mm. poison and take a sharp sword oil. So that blade flurry is not really coming through here, and you don't want to face tank another seven damage by Doctor Boom. You also do not want to trade your Earth Ring Farseer into that because it's gonna be buffed as well. Yeah, it seems pretty. Uh, it seems like I just like might be sapped. Uh, I think right now he's he will probably just like sap it. And he's gonna say, you know, I don't want to deal with it this turn. I'm just probably gonna deal with it next turn. That's also what I expect. You, we might already see maybe, maybe putting on the pressure here with the with dagger mastery and preparation into Tinker's sharp sword oil and deadly poison. Oh, that's actually, this is really, actually really smart. I just I figured out. Yeah, uh, he can actually just go into oil, wait for it, kill it, and he doesn't. Yeah, he just takes the damage. I mean, it kind of sucks, but he doesn't need to waste the deadly poison at least. So it's just pretty fine too. And he's pretty healthy. It comes down to the bombs. What do they hit? One to the face and another one to wow, the face. Wow, that were, that was <laughs> were really some perfect. I mean, Orange didn't train his bombs enough. I think, like yeah. at this moment, yeah. We have to tell him after the games, Orange, please train your bombs. Please tell them what to do because that was absolutely crap. And now with that flame cannon here, that's gonna take absolute control of that uh, Earthen Ring Farseer. And we also see another Azure Drake, so refilling his hand is not a problem here for... Uh, for <laughs> yep, now I wanted to say Xyx, so for Orange, because it is Orange going up against Oscar Kai yeah. here. But Oscar Kai is a pretty good turn. Uh, he just wants to just go low tap, eviscerate. He can even zap it if he, want, if he feels like he will need to eviscerate for like damage phase. Yeah, I yeah. would zap it here mm -hmm. because definitely you're setting up a nice turn. Is that a lethal turn next turn? Uh, we have six damage from the weapon, 11. We have 40, uh, 50 That's damage. one man off. That's one man off, unfortunately. Uh, because you also 15, need to make yeah, a weapon. You yeah, need yeah. To weapon up. It would be 15 damage, but if we draw... What could we probably draw? I also don't expect him to deal lethal damage next turn. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, if he draws... No, if he draws bad for it, it's not enough as well, because you don't have a mana for it. But he just, like, uh, pretty much with the sap, uh, he just wants it for damage, because he feels like, you know, I'm just going to deadly poison uh, oil next turn. And then a uh, turn after that, I'm just gonna finish you with attack and just eviscerate. Because I feel like, uh, uh, um, not six those. Orange's orange. <laughs> orange's deck, yeah. Orange's deck probably doesn't run any belchers, it seems. Yeah. Um, so this could be pretty strong. 
I would just cover that because it's yeah. really confusing here. Orange is playing on Xixus account because of the technical difficulties we switched to the NA accounts because Blizzard is struggling right now keeping their servers online. So we're switching to NA. Not every player has an NA account. So Xixo was so nice to give his account to Orange and mm. to lend it to the players. Yeah. I feel like right now we'll probably just see the sap on the... On a water elemental. On a water elemental, yeah. Are you tired? A <laughs> mm, little bit. Yeah, I've been playing my groups lately, but I, I went through, so I don't really yeah, I'm mind. I'm tired too. It's always <laughs> at that one point where you really can't remember the names of the cards. That's when you're tired. But yeah, uh, this is probably just going to be like sap into oil. Uh, I wouldn't expect anything else. And just go deadly poison, I will the side and turn after. Okay, so question here is, does orange play belchers and another question is does ostkaka attack and he attacks right away because he's setting up lethal anyway next turn mm -hmm, definitely and, and emperor is not gonna help here i mean you can get rid of the belcher um do you actually <laughs> yeah, i think like you're so desperate right now that you actually have to just go for like killing your own shredder getting a heal from it you know yeah you, you but that's not gonna even help that's not even gonna shredder. help that's the thing it's not even going to help. So but I think this is going to be We have zero. the unstable portal. Unstable portal could give us a sludge belcher. Could give us an anti true, 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 true. So true. I would maybe go for a sorcerer's apprentice. Well, first of all, I would trade the shredder into that. Because you just need two more mana to trade the lower level away then. And then maybe go for a sorcerer's apprentice and unstable portal to see what comes out of that. And it's a desperation move. I, have I mean, to you can get to double that. vitality totem. And double vitality totem. Let's go. Double vitality totem could definitely. <laughs> if we see that, if we see that, that's definitely crazy. Wow. I mean, that would be. How much would that be? It would be 15 health for him. And but he goes for a water elemental. What has he prepared for us? Oh, he just go face. He's just setting up for lethal next turn. No. Yeah, yeah. He's just gonna kill it and go face. Yeah, but, but like we know. that, we know. That Oskaka will close it out, and that's risky to play it. I would have at least taken the chance here if I was orange. Just try it out. Maybe I mean, it happens. Yeah, the thing is, like, uh, we know each other's hands, right? So yeah, but you kind of have to, like, at this point, you have to hope he's not going to have the damage. On like, that level of play, you're seeing the rogue has a four damage weapon on the hand, has four hand cards. The, uh, I mean, sure, yeah, but that's, that's the thing. Like, uh, if you're orange at the point, like, he can decide, okay, I can YOLO, but what is more likely? Is it more likely that I'm going to get, like, double vitality to him, or is it more likely that he's not going to have that damage? You know, like, it's a pretty close call, but I think it's actually better to just go to phase there. But you could also get, it's not just the heal that would have saved you, it's also the taunts. And getting a taunt out of an unstable portal or the, just a Frostwolf grunt could Frost have also uh, uh. changed something if your opponent does not have that perfect lineup that Oskaka had now. So taking the chances, uh, definitely, well, we know there's nothing to blame here, but uh, I'm just talking about what could have been possible, how could you have played it out. Yeah. But anyway, we're jumping into the third game and Oskaka is leading now here 2-0 already. 2-0, yeah. And good thing is for Oskaka right now that he has a druid. As we said, if you have a druid as your last uh, as your last class, you're probably gonna get lucky. This is gonna be pretty hard one for Oskaka because druid versus mage isn't really too great. Um, we also see pretty good hand from orange right now, so I wouldn't be surprised that this is gonna be like two one. I don't think this is gonna be a sweep. Um, but after that, like when mage is out and you have a rogue and druid it's still a pretty fair game um druid is 50 50 right yeah it's a it's double a coin match. flip and then you have a rogue which is not favorite matchup but it's pretty good matchup still like it's still pretty winnable yeah i think the rogue has an edge there but it's like maybe 55 you think, 45. You think rogue has edge against druid yeah i do think so i disagree sir i don't know i feel like double combo should be favorite at least from my like when I play Druid, I feel. Hey, really Daniel told you not to Druid. disagree with me. I shall not disagree with people. And <laughs> you shall not. I'm just joking. We are keeping a conversation alive. Okay. So I really love that. <laughs> Disagreeing here, yeah. It, people see it differently. Mm -hmm. Every pro, pro player has another opinion on the thing. It's like, yeah. I mean, it's it's a thing. Like everybody plays Druid a little bit differently, so it can be because of that as well. And everybody has his own experience on ladder, and some people play stuff other than. Yeah. yeah, other people and 
And uh, let's jump back to the game. And this hand is really, really good for uh, M uh, Orange. Like, you just see that many minions on board turn four. Like, turn three. Um, for Skakai, it's turn four because of the Wild Girl. But how do you deal with this, the Druid? Like, this is so, so aggressive. So annoying. The Druid has a problem to deal with aggressive decks. If you're not a ramp Druid, if you're not an anti-aggro Druid, uh, you really struggle to deal with that. And we see the perfect lineup here. Also can follow that up with the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Put even more pressure on the board. Even though we do have a swipe, that, that is not going to take out lots here. On turn 5, seeing that swipe takes out one minion. Yeah. That's not what you want your swipe to do. That swipe is not going to be the best swipe in the world. I mean, he can actually just go like Sorcerer Apprentice and Frostbolt. That's how, like... Wow. It, that's aggressive because, like, you're going to get so much more damage from it right now because those mana worms are just going to get buffed as well. And Skaka is turn 4. He's on 17 health. So either way, this is going to be a pretty fast game here because if the Druid manages to survive, I, I guess he will be in a better spot. Mm-hmm. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, actually, uh, let me tell you a little story. He is playing the tutorial right here because you don't have an NA, an NA account, right? I do have an NA account, but um, I have it differently. It would be like d different battle tags and stuff, okay. so I'm just watching you over and just Yeah, and right now he's doing the tutorial <laughs> for for some time now. Always when we are casting, he's sometimes like, okay, I'll do that move, <laughs> let's just quickly do the tutorial. <laughs> and uh, I really enjoy that. So. I mean, I don't think the swipe is going to come out here. I feel like it's going to be Harrison Jones' turn. It has to be. It has to be. But like it does not really change something. We can also start Calculate now this turn. Four damage from Frostbolt and Hero Ability. Then four damage on those, so eight. Makes 12 damage, 15, 17. Perfect lethal if you go for Harrison here. And if you don't clear... Yeah, I think this is definitely going to be clear. Like, there's no option not to clear here. And yeah, we see uh, Oskaka do the clear. And this is... Probably gonna be the removal frostbolt. I feel like yeah, Frost, the removal frostbolt. We used to have a lot of strong minions on board. Um, not really too scared of anything. But the thing is, so Skaka now can swipe hero power. He can get rid of a wow. lot of damage, and Metsant is gonna stay on the board as a last minion, right? Oh, he can actually no, no. Force of nature is the same thing. If he force of nature's, he wants to save t uh, three more health, two more health, two more health. Yeah, but yeah. it doesn't really matter because if the fireball comes, the fireball comes. He's I mean, not playing around that, and we have two. We he can't have two play. Frostbolt. He can't play around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like, like you can't play around it. So why would you play around it? No, no, that's that's the thing. That's the thing but using the swipe here, or the the differences between using the swipe or the 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 white the, uh, the force of nature. Yeah, the force of nature saves you two health. Like two health can be really important here. Uh, also, when you just can draw into like. Probably lore heal yourself right now. He has to play lore and heal, but yeah. then the I mean, he doesn't. He d he doesn't have to. He can just swipe hero power. Hope enemy doesn't have any minions. He can have like d double flame cannon in hand or something like that, or but like, like that really expensive you, you stuff. You always do not have to think about surviving. You also have to set up how you win the game. And but at this point, at this point, I don't think he can think about surviving. I think at this point, he needs to think about how I survive for a little bit longer to get my, I don't know, rag in game or something like that. Like, he needs to just, like, be pretty lucky. And he actually doesn't kill the Mad Scientist, which is quite surprising. Actually, it actually makes sense. It makes sense because he's going to Ancient of Lore turn yeah, after. Yeah, as you said, you want to play yeah. the Ragnaros soon or the Ancient of Lore, yeah. so you don't want your mirror entity out on the opponent's side here. So, Shredder is pretty strong. Uh, I think right now... Orange is just like mind gaming, thinking, or he can actually thinking about killing his own mad scientist just to get the minion from the mirror entity. That he decides to go face. Here. He decides to go face, and this is probably just gonna be. Ooh, Belcher might change things, but I think it's still Asian of Lore, and probably killing the two one as well. Hmm. Well, it's a difficult turn here. We would need Number Guy, the survival specialist here, telling us uh, what to do best. <laughs> um. The thing is, like, if you play the lore here, and um, the like, the secret is gonna come out no matter what next yeah. turn. If if you're not dead, obviously, if you're not dead, uh, secret is gonna come out. So there's not really reason not to kill it. Um, yeah, there's the Haitian of Haitian of lore for heal. 
Not quite yet. Not Oscar quite yet. I mean, Belcher, Belcher makes sense a lot of like M M Belcher makes a lot of sense as well. But the problem is that if you play Belcher now, uh, the, it's gonna be even worse for you turn after, right? Because uh, when you play the Asian of floor, you can't really play it because you're just gonna give it to your opponent. Yeah, but you also have the big game hunter to trigger that secret if you wanted to. But now he's down to 2 HP, so we could say 1 of lethal here for Orange. Yeah, 1 damage of lethal for some boys. And so this is pretty interesting. He can go flame, flame cannon, hero power, but then he can play... Uh, oh, he, he, uh, current or mage changes everything. Yeah, I think like if he wouldn't uh, draw the uh, current or mage, I would just go for Shredder, Hero Power, yeah. but like now, I, like this, this is perfect. It's another three drop, putting more pressure on the board. That's why, is it helping here? Oh. Yeah, and this is a, this is the thing. Like, you cannot even play Asian of right now because you're dead. Yeah, you're dead whatever you yeah. do. I don't see a way for Oscar Cut to survive here. Yeah, that's why I like the Belcher a little bit more. La I mean, Lore last turn and now into Belcher. But he probably goes for Doomsayer Hope. Doomsayer Hopes. Is it going to be the Doomsayer? It's not gonna be Doomsayer this time. At least he tried. Yep. And this is gonna be GG. Uh, as we kinda expected, to be honest. Like, we both expected Mage to win this matchup. And it's gonna be 2 1 for Oskaka still. He still has to play against Rogue and Druid. Um, two matchups that are really kinda iffy. Like, I mean, Druid is 50 50, kinda. Like, unless he plays Ram Druid, then for the double combo, it would be favorite. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, then you have a rogue. You say rogue is favorite. I say druid is favorite. We'll yeah, what's see. your what's your percentage on that? Matchup? Like 55, 55 for druid. Wow. Okay, I have fifty five for the rogue. <laughs> so come on, the 10%, difference is not too ten high. Ten percent is a big difference. <laughs> so it's 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 gonna be really interesting for well, sure. At you least you know, I give the edge to the rogue because of the zaps. Okay. Because of the zaps. I don't know how it works. Actually, I'm not experienced now with the Emperor of Thorison because I was casting a lot lately and not playing too much. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know how Emperor of Thorison changes that matchup maybe in favor for the Druid. Maybe Definitely. it gives an edge to the Druid because you don't really want to play it in the Rogue. I don't feel like it has too much value there. And oh, I have to rejoin. Thanks, Blizzard. <laughs> no, it's not even a Blizzard bug. It's it's a Maynard bug now. Oh, okay, okay. I have to to join Ostkaka first. That's the thing, and that's why I have to rejoin first. So there we go. So we're getting into game. Uh, it's gonna be Druid versus Rogue. So we can straight up see <laughs> how the matchup is gonna play out. Do we want to flip a coin to predict the winner? Nah, I think <laughs> like th this matchup is actually a lot about the skill. Uh, sometimes, obviously, like there's always some RNG, but um, this matchup is a lot about the skills. Like if you would be JJ, I would say, uh, which I think that JJ is one of the best Rogues players in Europe at least. Uh, I would say probably that Rogue is favorite if you're like Super JJ 102 or what? Or which JJ are you talking? Yeah, about? Super JJ, Super yeah, JJ. Super yeah, JJ. yeah, yeah. Uh, but if you're like Tice, who's like really heavy Druid player, yeah. you'd probably just maybe say Druid is more favorite. I played Druid more lately, and I felt like would you Druid keep is that Zap here? Um, I think I like uh, keeping Zap uh, if you don't have a coin usually. But then also he wants to go for minions to have early on to play. So it's like iffy. It's it's really hard. And we do see the Emperor Thorison here. The coin is on Ostkaka's side. It is still a 2-1 here for him, but he still has to close it out. He still has to close it out, exactly. And the hand from Druid isn't really too great. We don't see any innervates. We don't see wild growth. So this is going to give a lot of time to Rogue player unless Ostkaka draws the wild growth, for example, next turn. Yeah, and in this turn of events, it's actually pretty good to redraw that zap because you want those minions in the early game. If the if the druid has such a weak early game, but wow, the wild growth, wild growth on turn two. That's that's perfect. That's, that's all you the want. skill. Yeah, that's <laughs> all you want. You just go into Shredder into Emperor turn four. Turn four Emperor is always nice. That is the skill you were talking about, <laughs> or the RNG. I don't really know. <laughs> So we still the farce here. I like the farce. Like you just want to build the presence. Uh, this matchup is a lot of like all the druid matchups. Kind of about the presence. Uh, you want to have good presence on board. Okay, with well, that Harrison Jones, I actually have to say I also favor the druid now. 
Mm, yeah. With bad hands. Some. Uh, it's hard to say. But th versions. this 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 uh, turn actually doesn't look that it's gonna be hard, but it's actually pretty hard. Like you can go for a turn uh, Harrison, you can go Belcher, you can go keep uh, Shredder. So there are a few options to go with. Uh, he decided to go for Harrison, which means I wanna really draw that innovate. You know that kind of stuff. Um, taking the initiative. Pretty much. Yeah, I would have played the Belcher here because it trades so well with your opponent's board if he does not have a direct answer to mm -hmm. that. But actually, Oscar Ka is not taking the chances here because if the Sludge Belcher is removed and he can just trade his 3-3 uh, three, three into the 1-2 slime, that's not too good for Oscar Ka. So he decides to go for some card draw, adding some options to his hands. Uh, but unfortunately, we can't see the turn 5 Emperor now with the coin, so that is not going to come into play. Now we have Dr. GG, now we have Emperor GG. All we need is like Prince GG, I think, right now. So well, every card will be GG at one point. So <laughs> then casting is easy. You can say, okay, player one draws into GG, player two draws into DG. <laughs> and there we do have Escape Concede GG. <laughs> uh, it's going to make it all pretty easy. So ladies and gentlemen, prepare for the next expansion <laughs> with a lot of GG cards. A lot of GG cards. Yeah, no, but let's get serious here once again. Uh, now this turn... You can't really go for the Violet Teacher. You yeah, have everything to. is like kind of awkward here. Uh, yeah. You don't like if if uh, Orange would have Eviscerate here, this would be awesome. But since he doesn't, this Prep is into Eviscerate. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Also, the backstab would feel good here with the Earth Ring Farsia. Just take it out somehow. But now I'm pretty sure that Oskaka will take out that Violet Teacher. Yeah, he takes out the Violet Teacher, probably plays the Belcher, and he's going to be in a really good spot. This is what I liked about the Harrison, is that he pretty much prepared for the Violet Teacher. The Violet Teacher is most common uh, drop, uh, four drop, four rogue. So he prepared for the Violet Teacher. He said, you know, you're not going to have Eviscerate. You're not going to have Eviscerate. We saw that uh, Orange didn't have it, and now Oskaka can punish that. Yeah, very smart play here, and uh, Harrison Jones takes care of that Violet Teacher. Staying away with that taunt, actually I really like that seeing here, because you don't even really want to play the SI7. How do you want to trigger that? You don't want to play Preparation. Blade Flurry is nothing for that turn. So that is out of range here for the Rogue. Yeah, I mean, he can clear board if he really wants to. Like, he can just, like, Hero Power, attack yeah, the Belcher, oh. Blade Flurry into SI Agent. I mean, he might, but... Like, what do you do uh, otherwise, right? Like, you play low tap, which dies to Harrison. That's terrible. Uh, you it play all feels so bad. So I think this actually might be just the play. Like, you just hero power into prep, blade, like, attack, prep, but blade, But do you flurry. go for the prep here already then, or do you just uh, don't care about the SI7 agent? I, I think you care about the SI7. You want to build the board, I think. So I really like the prep, uh, blade, flurry into SI. Yeah, prevent some damage. Well... Playing the Blade Flurry after that is even smarter, preventing two <laughs> damage to the face yeah. than attacking. And yeah, this is going to be full board clear for Orange. At least, uh, but so many options here, so many options. And I expect either to see the Emperor Thorison if Oscar Ka feels like that, or you could also take out the pilot, uh, play the pilot of Dreader and take out that SI7 agent. That's more of a safe play because you never want to allow the Rogue to have a minion on the board. You never want him to buff that with Tinker's Sharp Sword all, but Oskaka is not expecting that Tinker's Sharp Sword all next turn, and Emperor Thorison coming down and reducing the cost of seven hand cards. Yeah, I mean, Thorison here is so strong, uh, mainly because, like, Oskaka saw that Orange had so many problems to deal with the Harrison Jones, right? And this was 5-4. Uh, yeah. Like, what is he gonna do against 5-5 five five now? Like, it was the same spot, like, two turns ago, but the minion was 5-4, and not 5-5. Five five. So exactly. there's actually a really high possibility that just Orange is not going to have an answer, and he doesn't. So it was really smart for Oskaka. And Orange just goes for Lothap here. Oskaka, on the other hand, now has a nice turn set up. Also draws into the Ancient of Lore. Also nice on turn 7. Yeah. Uh, he has quite a few options. You can just go like um, Drake into Shredder. You can... If you could clear the board like Drake here, then... I can, you cannot no, really clear. No, you can't clear the board. Well, you, you, you could. could with Keeper, but it's like not worth yeah, it. Yeah, that's not uh, worth you're it. Not, right. You're not expecting to die from playing three health when an uh, enemy has only like three damage on board, right? So I think like this is probably just gonna be Shredder uh, and kill the five five. Maybe he can even clear the three three. Like we've seen that there were so many problems to deal with five one. Yeah. So there's probably gonna be some problems to deal with five two as well, and you also get your cards cheaper which is another advantage of that. I totally agree to that. Uh, just a backstab drawn here for Orange. 
that's not gonna do much. Uh, so not even a great blade flurry here for him this turn. If he at least had now deadly poison, at least deadly poison or <laughs> to take a sharp sword oil, but it's just not there for the rogue. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you have to probably just drop the boom. You drop the boom, kill the emperor, <laughs> which feels so bad. I mean. Uh, the damage is done already. <laughs> yeah, damage is done already, exactly. We have a swipe for two mana, we have a swipe for five mana. If you leave that spell damage on the board here, that are gonna some very powerful swipes and we force have a of nature force for of four. nature yeah. for four. That's some crazy wow. stuff, red for zero. And that's really sick here lining up. Emperor Thorson definitely adding some spice to the game. Yeah, so I mean, uh, he probably just needs to go for Doomsayer, I feel like. <laughs> like you just see, I mean, it, it, happened, it happened to me twice today. Yeah, like, so you're unfortunately, backing on that. Unfortunately, it was always like kind of against me, but uh, it happened today, might happen again. Uh, nah, he just goes probably just to trade the Emperor and uh, Drake, yeah, Drake and the Boom. There you go, it just feels so bad to trade into the Emperor, mm -hmm. I guess. And, wow. I mean, if you're a Skaka here, you can do pretty much whatever you want right now. Yes, you can you just start with red. Like, you can just red swipe and still play Asian of Floor. That's how crazy this is. That's really how crazy it is. I would definitely attack yeah, you first. Attack first. You attack first, definitely. You attack play first. Play rough, play swipe, clear the board, and... Play the lore. Play the lore to draw more cards to draw into the combo to set up lethal. You don't even have to heal. You're so healthy on 23 HP. This is this is nuts. This is pretty much nuts. Like the emperor just made this game so so easy. And if you're lucky, you're not even losing the emperor here. If the bombs do not hit well, wow! And there's the combo. Yeah, I like the playing the uh, Asian of Lore first because it makes a bigger chance for uh, emperor to survive. Exactly. Make your cards much much cheaper. And I mean, whatever kind of happens, like you're gonna have combo for probably 20 over there 20. There we see. Next wow, time. but the bomb hits for two and hits for one to the face. Yeah, for one to the face, but it doesn't matter. We yeah. see the combo is gonna now cost uh, five and mana. And the second late game backstab. Yeah. So drawing it in turn seven and turn eight is not really helping him out. Yeah, here. he needed the backstabs early game. Like if he had the backstabs early game, he could deal with Harrison Jones. He could deal with Emperor turn like when yes. it came on. Uh, now it's just a blank where it does nothing. And yeah, this is going to be Oskaka winning the game 3-1, uh, advancing to winner's bracket. I think he's going to play against Freaky. Yes, he's going up against Freaky. First of all, winning here against Orange. Co congratulations to Oskaka taking out Orange here with a 3-1 victory. Now going up in the winner's match, as you already said, against Freaky, who won against Strife Grow. That's also a bit surprising because many people might not expect Freaky to win that. But now, th another Swedish battle we have to say, because Freaky also is from Sweden going up against Oskaka. And right after that, we have the elimination match between Strife Crow and uh, Orange. Orange. And that's also an absolute cracker. But first of all, we are going to take a little break. Thank you, Alice, for casting with Thank me. Thank you very much. And after that short break, we will...